that, I would like to call upon Andrea Smolin um, to give his talk. Thank you. So today we are going to talk about smart integration of solar. Uh, actually, we have done uh, above 1,000 projects, mainly rooftop. Uh, we at PPAM Solcraft, and uh, uh, actually two of these are pure what you can call nano grid, maybe because they are not even micro grid. But this is in Sweden, and uh, the fact is we almost have no sun winter time in Sweden. So it's interesting that we can do it. Uh, one, one of the projects is a factory, and the other one is a summer cottage house. But uh, if you want to live there, it's very hard to make a microgrid. So the situation in Europe is a bit different than here. Here you have rather consistent sun all year around. So, now I'm going to switch over to an example that we are going to do in Hyderabad, um, the green business center in Hyderabad of CII. So we're looking at a, a demand that is fairly much the, uh, consisting of a cooling machine. Otherwise, it's a green building. So it's uh, really lean uh, and no unnecessary loads. Uh, if we would uh, supply solar uh, there, business as usual, the supply profile would look like that, which results in a, still a consumption in the early morning and uh, uh, export daytime and then another consumption in the late night. And this um, kind of um, profile, we actually have a very good way of treating via bifacial solar panels. So I have one of these samples here. I mean, normally you would put your solar panel tilting south, maybe 20 degrees here. Uh, but the good thing of a bifacial is it's active on both sides, so you can actually put it vertical and you can have multiple functions and you can save land usage uh, and such. Uh, so here we can see some examples of it. Uh, so this is a fall protection uh, that we're using in Sweden instead of a normal fall protection from flat roofs, for instance, where it's needed due to, I mean, maintenance on the roof and so on. Uh, another example is from Lulio, where the sun almost never sets. So the, actually, they are very happy about this, and now they are really going for bifacial. Uh, and then we have a quite early project uh, that we use for research. Uh, and here you can see this generation profile. So you see here a vertical. We have a bad tarf paper roof in this sense, which is very common in Sweden, but if this albedo here, the, the reflection from the ground really matters how the generation will become like. In the background there you have a normal tilted 40 degree, and you can see black for the vertical during a day and gray for the uh, standard solar installation generation profile. And I mean, now, uh, in, Euro in the European sense, it really makes uh, a, a good role. If you look at this yellow, you can see the price, uh, the Swedish pricing. There is like a spot uh, market for each hour. Uh, the blue here is the generation profile of a vertical bifacial, and the green one is of a standard one. Uh, and. Uh, I mean, similar behavior happens in uh, Germany, for instance. Here we have a, a much higher uh, solar penetration. And if you can see the volume here, it's very low, but still very high priced uh, compared to the afternoon. But it's so much solar supply at that time, so the price really goes down. So uh, we want to use this, I mean, not only in a microgrid, but it has a good usage in microgrid. But one thing you can do is uh, make a smart city vision. I mean, you can put it having four functions next to the elevated train track or metro track, uh, being a noise barrier, fence, 
uh, and uh, uh, visual barrier, and of course solar power generator. You can also have a solar shield or an elevated roof, and all this decreases the cooling demand in the, in the Indian sense. So uh, now we are going to the case at Green Building Center, and the, we are going to uh, adopt to this iconic building, Green Building, uh, and we could actively demand the usage of power in the chiller because maybe we can have a different set point of the room temperature. I mean, making this into a microgrid uh, for just this building, in fact. Uh, and uh, all here is an example of this, how it looks from above. Here is actually how we intend to put the solar panels in sun feathers, shading the building, taking down the cooling load, uh, and then some blue ones, which is vertical fences that could look like this. Uh, and so by using some of them in vertical, we can trim the supply to really uh, look like the demand. Uh, so uh, what we come to uh, is that the smart active demand we, we eventually we could come to a sanctioned load of about 10 kilowatt instead of today's 45, 85 kilowatt, or we could adopt a battery and make this a uh, microgrid. Uh, and uh, as for now, it seems like probably it's, uh, I mean, the, uh, the net metering scheme of Telangana is that uh, you can't really get this effect because your solar uh, can only be 80% of your sanctioned load, just looking at the inverter power. So, so coming to that, uh, I think um, as a policy thing, uh, I think we should uh, look at not restricting in net metering, meaning that, I mean, okay, you can have a sanctioned load of 10 kilowatt consumption and have a minus whatever you want if you adopt to grid rules. Uh, and uh, looking at this in a bigger sense, one day there will be a need of curtailing solar power. So uh, that is something we, of course, can do, and that's what's just what I mentioned. Uh, but then, of course, it's a very unclear economic viability for uh, Indian customers uh, doing such things. So with that, I'd like to thank you. And uh, we also have Kiran here from CII if there are questions in this topic. Thanks.